This is the best known sculpture by Antonio de Pagliuolo, who was one of the most important artists of the early Italian Renaissance. This small bronze sculpture, which is less than 18 inches high, is visually monumental in its description of the figure in dramatic action. Its subject is from classical Greek mythology. The hero Hercules battles the giant Antaeus. Antaeus' mother Gaia was goddess of the earth. As long as Antaeus remained in physical contact with mother earth, he could not be conquered. Hercules discovered the source of Antaeus' strength and defeated him by lifting Antaeus off the ground. Using his own body as a weapon, Hercules crushes Antaeus against his torso. The strain that we see in Hercules' back and legs makes the weight of Antaeus' body visually palpable. In the context of early Renaissance art, Paleowolo's sculpture advances the depiction of the human body in dramatic action. His figures have a remarkable freedom of movement that is only limited by how far their limbs can anatomically stretch. In Paleowolo's visual language, the body strains under such exertion that each muscle becomes pronounced. Paleowolo, who may have gained his knowledge of the body by dissecting cadavers, was attentive to how the body's muscular structure might appear at particular moments as it moved through action. In this sculpture, he translated the body's stamina into the material of bronze. As Antaeus pushes in vain to free himself, his open mouth is more than a scream of physical pain. Antaeus's life is being crushed out of his body. Antaeus's open mouth visualizes the exit of his soul. As Hercules squeezes the life out of his opponent, Paleowolo is able to make human mortality visible. Recognizing that this sculpture can be viewed from multiple sides, Paleowolo arranged the figures with their arching bodies and extending limbs to draw the viewer around the work. This sculpture does not sit passively on the pedestal. The movement of the figures activates the space in which the art object, as well as the viewer, exists. The organization of the figures encourages our curiosity to see the work from different points of view, thus setting the viewer in motion. Paleowolo also depicted Hercules and Antaeus in a painting. The painting's arrangement of the figures is very similar to that of the bronze sculpture. Perhaps because he worked in sculpture, Paleowolo was particularly attentive to the painted figure as a form in space. In this painting, we see Paleowolo's figures moving freely, even ferociously, within their space. Paleowolo incorporated the anatomical structure of the figures and the movement of their bodies into his painting's design. The profile of Antaeus' face is powerfully contrasted against the sky. The dark cavity of his mouth is a visualization of death worthy of Francis Bacon. As Hercules lifts Antaeus, the movement of the drama is upward. This action is compositionally balanced by a downward-pointing triangular form created by Antaeus's elbows and Hercules' back. Our reading of the composition activates the narrative. Hercules and Antaeus has a pendant panel depicting Hercules and the Hydra. In this panel, the Greek hero battles a multi-headed monster. As Hercules' lion-skin garment fills with air like the sail of a ship, we perceive the hero's forward and fluid motion. Paleoolo is able to create the impression that in the next moment, Hercules' body will continue through its motion and complete its action. Hercules raises his club above his head 
and is about to deliver a fatal blow. Hercules's pose, with his arm raised above his head, expands his chest, emphasizing his body's power. His body is like a compressed spring, waiting to be released. This painting has a triangular composition that gives stability to the violent imagery. We read the image, starting from the lower left, across Hercules' body to the club. Our eye is then redirected to the lower right. As we read the image, from left to right, we carry the club with us. Our reading of the image drops the power of Hercules onto the hydra. To better appreciate how effective Palaiowola was in suggesting that his figures are actually in motion, we should compare his art with that of some of his predecessors. If we are examining the evolution of figures acting in pictorial narrative space in 15th century Florentine art, we need to start with the frescoes by Masaccio in the Brancacci Chapel. When Masaccio's figures are in motion, such as Adam and Eve exiting Eden, they still seem arrested in that moment. By comparison to Palaiuolo's Hercules and the Hydra, Masaccio's expulsion seems a bit stagnant. Palaiuolo intensifies the illusion of the figure moving through the pictorial space of the painting. Masaccio's tribute money evidences a pictorial narrative space that the viewer can freely move around in. However, Masaccio's figures themselves are mostly standing still, locked into their place within the composition. In Poliawolo's composition, there is a heightened sense that the figures are in motion. The depiction of figures moving in space that we see in Poliawolo's paintings reminds us that he was a sculptor. Poliawolo's depiction of Christ on the cross in the Church of San Lorenzo combines the brutality of physical death and the promise of spiritual life. This life-size crucifix was made of cork so that it could be carried in liturgical procession. The anatomical modeling and the illusion of blood flowing from Christ's wounds gives this figure a heightened realism. Its intensity of emotion and vivid depiction of the body was artistically bold and spiritually powerful. Although his head is hung, Christ's torso expands heroically off the cross. The position of his legs and turning hips imply movement. The tension evidenced in the muscles of Christ's legs suggest that he might at any moment triumphantly step forward. The impression of movement implied in Christ's body would have been even further accentuated as the processional crucifix was carried forward through the church. In the context of the liturgical service, Palaiuolo's sculpture would have brought Christ to life in the presence of the believer. Palaiuolo's visual language highlights the heroic yet mortal body engaged in dramatic action. In this crucifix, he applies this to a sacred purpose of visualizing immortality. This crucifix is thematically the opposite of the battle between Hercules and Antaeus. In Hercules and Antaeus, life is leaving the body. The crucifix depicts a body that, though dead, manifests the potential for life to re-enter it. The treatment of the body in Antonio de Poliuolo's art is more than an aesthetic enterprise. His ability to make the invisible energy of life, visible and tangible, touches the most basic human experience. This depiction of mortality makes the viewer more intensely aware of being alive.